technology and the internet has given us a, 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 an environment that makes all this probably a little more difficult if, if, we, if we're too hard on ourselves, Daniel. So I, I happened to read this quote from Aristotle this morning and I love it. And he says, it's the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. So to be able to, in some ways, distance yourself and just think, I am not that thought. I'm having a thought, whether it's I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. It's just a thought. And how are we going to, we can choose to accept it or we can choose to not accept it. And I've heard Teresa say this many times. It's like, how do you want to feel? Is this serving you? If not, maybe it's not a good thought. Yeah. And are you willing to just be plain wrong about what you're thinking? Or what if the complete opposite is true? And are you willing to make your brain do the work of exploring that? It, it, just that willingness to consider that you might be 100% wrong, that alone cracks the door open and we don't know what happens from there. No, this is all related in a professional sense, in a, in a therapy sense, not the coaching, the therapy sense, with cognitive behavior therapy. You know, you, you know, the whole point is beliefs, as you said this many times, both of you, beliefs drive emotions, which drive actions. And, uh, and so it's what we believe. And there is a prejudice towards the negative, as Teresa says, that brown spot over there, that that's just a rock. Oh, I was wrong. It's a lion. I'm dead. You know, uh, we, we tend to be conservative about things. And so we're kind of wired to be um, half empty, actually, uh, for survival. And it's all related to this. But again, that's in the therapy range. But uh, we're not talking therapy here, but we're talking about, you know, navigating the world ourselves. Yes, Danielle. Uh, what you're saying is, is some great building blocks. So you're starting with your self-regard and being able to see yourself good and bad and accept yourself as it is, which leads to that self-efficacy. And the self-efficacy is, I believe I can do this. I can change. I can go after whatever goal. But even within self-efficacy, the next part is your personal skills, your personal beliefs about yourself, and also your environment. Because a lot, you know, we can't discount somebody in an environment where they're getting support that they need versus an environment where when you start to change your beliefs, you're getting shot down like, oh, no, that's not right. And it's really hard at those beginning stages when you don't feel strong to have everybody say you're wrong. You know, we all deal in the field of uh, aging. Uh, uh, Teresa, not so much lately, but uh, I think some of your clients fall into that category. But uh, we've talked about this as ageism and marginalizing older adults and putting them off to society and and basically regarding them and treating them and in the press and in in the media and in our cultural decisions and our public policy that they are on the margins of society and really have basically have no potential or anything to give. And that has quite programmed many people to believe that uh, if they believe that and how that has uh, caused so much disease, lower quality of life. So uh, this, this, and it's all related to being human. Go figure. <laughs> Indeed. So how would we close this? Uh, what, 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 what are the, what are the nuggets that we can give someone as they navigate the world and realize, uh, you know, that the, perhaps they're, 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 they're their biggest impediment to being what they want to be and feeling the way they want to. And Teresa's ready to jump again. I think the, the secret ingredient here is love. And, uh, you know, if we can be good at eavesdropping on our own thoughts and monitoring the chatter that happens inside of our own brains, is it the same love? that we would talk with someone who we cared deeply about and, and probably it isn't. So step one, be a good court reporter and just document, monitor what's happening inside your brain. That awareness alone is, is, you know, a game changer. And then we get to become an editor of what we allow that talk to happen in our brains. And, and I think telling our story is, is what we can do. How do you tell your story? And is it with love, right? What do you believe about yourself? Who are you and who do you want to be? Those are some very good questions to at least examine, um, you, right. Your relationship with yourself and start to see where you might be in your own way. Powerful. I know as I was a kid, I, I heard very frequently is, 
love starts with yourself. You know, you have to love yourself before you can love another. I mean, that uh, many people, as we've said, with the humility part can consider that arrogant or in some ways, but no, not at all. I mean, if, if uh, you, 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 can't I believe I've come to believe that what I was taught that you can't fully love someone if indeed you know your foundation yourself is is rotting is is not one based on love of yourself and that's accepting you what's and all right and uh, and but you know just not focusing on the what's and knowing that uh, you can do great things and good things and uh, not get in the way Danielle you got some closing comments. I, I- what both of you said was beautiful. So I have no more advice, just a practical tool that I love. Um, it's, it's used a lot in positive psychology and it's a great resource. And I'll put the link in the description of this podcast, VIA character strengths. It's a free test that you go through and it helps you identify what your strengths are, what your values are. And then once you say, okay, if, if you're, you value love and social connection, then it's going to give you tools like here's one step you might think about to cultivate those strengths. So it's just a a good tool to have in your toolbox for people who maybe are listening and want to take some concrete steps to keep the process going. I feel like I've, uh, I've, I've been in, in a warm hug here uh, (laughs) with being human, you know, with, with you guys. And uh, I hope our listeners do too. Any closing comments uh, beyond that? I love you guys. Beautiful. Yes. Ditto. Absolutely. Thank you. This was very nice. And I can't help but think that uh, anyone listening to this is going to feel a little bit better about their lives and what they can accomplish. And if that's the case, mission accomplished for us too. Thank you very much, ladies. Pleasure. We want to continue to provide information that is valuable and reliable to our listeners. We welcome your comments and suggestions for topics that are important to you. Please see the description of this episode to contact the Brightside team. You've been listening to Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow.